I also wanted to take a quick moment to tell the folks that were here yesterday in the front yard doing glitter tattoos. Now, this used to be a bumblebee. It's now just sort of glittery. But doing glitter tattoos and visiting with the folks in general, just thank you so much for being there and part of the outreach to the community on behalf of the church. And whoever got sneaky and changed the sign under my nose that didn't tell me it had my name on it. Thank you. <laughs> if you please join me in our call to worship this morning. Uh, this week, uh, Dr. Lisa Hancock from Discipleship Ministries is the author of a goodly portion of the prayers in the bulletin. So let us hear these beautiful words. Come, let us worship God. God is the great sower scattering seeds of life and abundance across the earth. God is the great gardener tilling and cultivating our soil with love and grace. God is the great life giver, sowing seeds and tending the soil to produce the fruit of the abundant life. May we nurture and grow God's new reality, bearing the fruit of flourishing and abundance for all God's creation. Amen. This week, our hymn, it, our first hymn is in the red hymnal, number 596. Blessed Jesus at thy word. If you could please stand, whether in body or in spirit. Please be seated. If you'll please be in an attitude of prayer with our opening prayer. Loving God, sower and reaper of love, we admit to you that we are like stony fields, capable of growing goodness and sharing it around 
but also we allow goodness to wither and weeds to flourish. Most loving God, please open the furrows of our lives to receive again the seeds of your gospel. Rain your mercy upon us, shine your warmth and light into every dark place, and bring forth in us not the harvest we deserve, but the harvest that in your glorious love you have destined for us. Through Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. As we continue in an attitude of prayer, hear the words of our prayer of illumination. Listen to this word. Where sin abounds, love much more abounds. Receive from such abundance and give thanks. You, my siblings, are among the richest people in the world. You have the wealth of Christ with you always even to the end of time. Amen. So we're gonna do some, we're, we're gonna do a project this morning. And I know I made, I promised that I wouldn't make people come forward, but I thought maybe I could tempt some people to come and spend some time with me, if you want. I've got on my gardening hat. I have dirt. No one? Oh, you two are my favorites. I'm so pleased. No, no, it's Christians of all ages, Christians who are young at heart. Then I was hoping you'd come back. Nice to see you. So this time of the year, we hear messages when we read the Bible passages where Jesus talks about sowing seeds. Do you know what the word sowing means, either of you? It's not sowing like you, with a needle and thread. Do you know what it means to sow seeds? It's a fancy word for planting. Planting seeds. Do you know how to plant seeds? Are you an expert? But you know, if you practice sowing seeds, planting seeds, you get better and better, don't you? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to sow some seeds. And we're going to think about how when you sow seeds of love, which grow in someone's heart when you're kind to them it's a lot like actually planting seeds flower seeds in dirt did you know that because you put all of the right things in a cup the dirt and the seeds and you water it a little bit and then you mark where you planted it so that you know where to go back and look later and you wait and you watch it's one of those things i'm not very good at being patient but i enjoyed waiting patiently to see when the seeds will sprout have you ever told your your folks that you love them did you know that when you say that to somebody that you are planting seeds of love in their heart no do your folks ever tell you that they love you? Never? We need to have a conversation. Okay, so Pastor Heidi is going to say to you then, I love you. How does that make your heart feel when you hear somebody say that? Good. So 
Did you feel that little seed get planted in your heart and start to grow just a little bit? Okay. So the next time your parents, whom I believe do tell you they love you, you'll hear it and go, oh, there's a seed being planted in my heart. So the next time they do it, are you then going to say, oh, I love you too? You're going to be planting more seeds. Way to go. So what's the first thing you do when you actually plant seeds, Ben? Do you remember? You dig and put the dirt in. Yeah. So let's see what we've got for a cup. So we'll put some dirt in here. And I'm getting dirt everywhere because that's what happens when you garden. The best part. There's some more dirt. Okay. Now this is dry dirt right now. So what we're going to do is see if we're going to then. I may just keep that at the pulpit later. So we're going to get that a little bit moist. I'm going to trust you to put your own dirt in. Or you can trade cups with me. I love that. Let me score it there. Now, I bought two different kinds of seeds. And do you know how hard it is to find flower seeds this time of the year? We won't go there. But I have little miniature sunflower seeds. And I have nasturtium seeds. And I've had them in water overnight so that they'll help to germinate. So we're going to plant a couple of seeds of both in your cup. And when they get bigger, they'll have to go outside. So these are nasturtium seeds. Do you want to put them in there? Make sure you spread them out. Because you don't want to crowd your love, do you? I didn't think so. Okay, these dishes seem like a good idea. Or not. And there's a sunflower seed. Oh, yeah. And here's another sunflower seed. And make sure you tuck them in, into sleep with, with the dirt over them just a little bit like that. There you go. And Let's get the water bottle and squirt it a little bit more. Do you want to squirt them? Can you squirt them without getting everything wet? Is your hand big enough for the of course? It's a water bag. Very cool. And you can grab some seeds using this tradition. So that looks gorgeous. So We've got little tags that will remind us that we're growing flowers. And I also have pencils. Can you think of one word to put on the back of your tag to make sure that your flower knows that you love them? Okay. There's a pencil and there's the tag. Can you write on it? Can you put it in? So, there you go. Write that word down. And same with you. It's hard to decide what to write. Maybe you know how to spell something. Okay. Perfect. Good job. Do you need to know how to spell something? So then we take the stick and we put it in the edge of your cup and it's got your little flower and little message and now you've got something to take back to mom and dad. So if anybody else wants to come up and plant seeds, all the stuff is right here and as you can see, there's half of it. <laughs> I think we need to be less afraid to plant seeds when we're given the opportunity. 
Our reading from the New Testament this morning comes from Romans chapter 8, the first 11 verses. Thank you. Good morning. Life of the Spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the sin law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemns sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the, who are in the flesh cannot please God. You are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bones, bodies, excuse me, your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Word of God for the people of God. Our court special music Our reading from the Gospel this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, beginning with verse 1 and concluding 
at an interval with the 23rd verse. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and he sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. And other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, but since they had no depth of soil, they died. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. And then Jesus explained the parable. Hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word, and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Lord. We start out so organized, but somewhere about midway through the service, I usually shuffle things around. So thank you for bearing with me. Now, I'm going to leave these supplies here for after service when you're less afraid to come up and plant some flowers and practice on the picture of planting love. Just saying. You're welcome. You may have noticed this morning in the prayers and in the little message and the scripture, we're talking about dirt. Exactly. Maybe even about insults involving dirt. Okay, I guess they don't have to be taken as insults, but they sure can feel like it sometimes. You've heard the phrase, right? Dumber than dirt? Really, that's what we're talking about. People are looking at me like, okay, her cheese has slipped off her ribs this week. I understand. So what are you going to do when Jesus calls us dirt? There, I said it. Deal with it. Jesus calls us dirt. Look at that scripture passage again. That's exactly what it says. Granted, he didn't say we were as dumb as dirt. I threw that one in there. But there is no getting around the fact that Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, lover of children and searcher for little lost lambs, calls you and me dirt. 
in this week's lecture. What do you think about that? Huh? Pretty good, huh? Where is the enthusiasm, people? Did you lose it at hello? Okay, just making sure you're still there. Okay, it wasn't just that he called us dirt. He also made fun of our ears. Well, your ears. I looked at mine. Mine are perfectly fine, see? It was your ears. Or maybe it is your lack of ears. Can you hear me? Okay, okay. Let anyone with ears listen, Jesus says. Sure, you've heard the parable before, but have you ever really listened to it? Did you ever just feel it for a moment? Did you ever realize just what Jesus was saying directly to you about dirt and your hearing? And you're just not getting it. This is one of those few parables that thankfully Jesus actually explains in the second part of the gospel text. He explained it because those guys following him around so long ago, they just didn't get it either. They were stumped by the words. Or maybe they were just a little offended by being called dirt and decided to call him out and say, hey, teacher guy, you know, what did you say? You called me dirt? That there's fighting words. Okay, well, maybe it didn't happen like that, but they didn't get it. They had to ask for an explanation, and you've heard that before. You've read it, or you told it, or you studied it, or you heard it preached at you. Some of you even to you. So you know what it's about, I mean, don't you? It is about the fact that you are dirt. It is about the fact that I am dirt. We are dirt together. That issue isn't really up for debate. The only question is what kind of dirt you're going to be. Because we actually get to choose our dirt essence. That was the only redeeming thing here, as far as I was concerned. When was the last time you got to choose what kind of dirt you get to be? Now that's pretty cool, you have to admit it. It's not like real dirt gets to choose, it's just that it's just dirt is what it is. In fact, if Jesus had been trooping around this countryside while he told his stories, he could talk about dirt that wasn't really dirt. It was hard packed clay. That's the kind of dirt you can't even dig in and once you jackhammer enough of it to drop in a seed, chances are it won't grow right because it never drains and things just rot in the ground. I don't want to be that kind of dirt. You want to be that kind of dirt? No. Or maybe he would mention thin topsoil hiding a stratum of sand and not the sand that yields gushers of oil. Dad, what am I doing wrong? Gushers of oil? Don't know what I'm doing, I apologize. We should be so lucky if it were gushers of oil, but the sand that doesn't provide enough nutrients and can't hold its water any better than, forgive me for saying so, a leaky diaper. Or maybe we would talk about the dirt that is twisted up with so many roots, it's like digging in a log pile. Or the dirt that is filled with rocks and it's like digging what you thought was a flower bed only to discover a gravel pit. And then maybe he would talk about the rich, black, glacier melt soil that seems to allow anything and everything to spring up when a seed comes near. There's some of that around here too, you know. Dirt is never just dirt, if you really look at it. Multiple forms, but still it is what it is. No choice in the matter, right? But we are different. We get to choose what kind of dirt we want to be. Maybe that does make us a little smarter than dirt. What do you think? That might have been a nicer title, come to think of it. Let's be smarter than dirt. 
I think I'll use that one. Smarter than dirt because we don't have to accept the soil conditions of our souls. We can change them and adapt them and grow them if we pay attention. Because the truth is, all of those categories seem to fit me. I'm ashamed to admit that, but it's true. I can be all of those kinds of dirt. How about you? Yes, there are times when I'm like a beaten down cat that can't accept another word, even a good word even a word from the Lord. It just bounces off the hard surfaces of my weariness or my stubbornness, waiting for a bird to come and eat it. I know what it means to be that cat. And yes, sometimes I'm so shallow, it startles even me. I take the easy route the unthinking cliched route and mouth something inane about the word of the Lord. And even though it might sound good at first, there isn't any depth to it. It doesn't sustain me or my hearers when things get difficult. I know what it means to be rocky soil. Most often, however, this is really embarrassing. I am the weedy, thorny kind. I've got so many tendrils running around. It's hard to even remember what's next. Going here and there, hither and yon, look solid into the next millennium. I'm rushing off to do one thing or another and then forget the whys and the wherefores and the who is and what the heck am I doing right. now? And even the good word gets choked out of me in my busyness. I know what it means to be thorny soil. But you know, once in a while, by the grace of God, I can find the space, find the depth, find the growing time to let God's word take root in me deep in my heart, deep in my soul, and begin to show some fruit. I know what it means to be the good soil. And now, what would really be dumber than dirt would be to continue to live just like that, slipping from one soil skate to another, Oh, sure, we have a variety of influences that cause those weaker states to take over if we let them. But I say to you this morning, let's not let them. Let's be smarter than dirt for once. Let's figure out what it takes to cultivate the good soil of our souls. Let's engage in those practices that break up the stones in our rocky soil. It gets rid of the hard edges, the sins we savor far too much. Let's adopt an attitude of focusing on the opportunities to hear the word and let it go deeper than that hard path surface. Let's pay attention and let's prioritize our lives as much as we can so that those unessential thorns don't become huge issues that Choke, up, choke us out of existence and choke out what is really important in our lives and in our faith. And let's tend to the good soil soul by spending time in service and worship, always listening for the word. My beloveds, let's be smarter than dirt. Are you with me on that? Let's be smarter than dirt. Built into this scripture is the idea that you have to be able to see beyond the immediate moment. A skill that a disciple needs to develop and quickly is the ability to look beyond the immediate horizon into the future that God has in store for all of us. We have to be able to see the kingdom as here 
and take steps toward it all the time. That doesn't mean that we lose sight of the dirt upon which we stand or the dirt that we are. It means that we also hold on to what we've been given, our ability to choose to be good soil. Now, I can see a serious point here, an important truth. Namely, disciples live in a very real world, but they also envision and work toward a better one. Like good soil, disciples look forward to a crop of a hundredfold, or sixtyfold, or thirtyfold, or any increase whatsoever. We see a harvest when others see only seeds planted in the dirt. My beloved, are you ready to plant? Are you ready to be smarter than dirt? Let's do it. I'll be with you. You'll be with me. We're stronger as a community. It's time to sow some seeds. I think it's time, don't you? Amen. Amen. That this couldn't have been any better a song. Number 707 in our red hymnal is the hymn of promise. It talks about growing seeds. So when you find your place, please stand as you're able, whether in body or in spirit, and let's sing. One of our great privileges each week is to come together and be in prayer as one body in Jesus Christ. And so I ask you, my beloveds, to please be in an attitude of prayer and remember those joys and those concerns we talked about earlier and lift them into God's keeping. Those that have been spoken aloud and those that are still nestled in our hearts. Let us pray. God, who plants seeds of hope and justice within our lives, we are so grateful for this community of faith and for all anywhere 
who hunger and thirst for your healing, reconciling word. You know all the things that are on our hearts today and you bring us together in love and support. We ask your healing mercies with those who struggle with illness of every kind, with feeling lost and marginalized, for those who mourn and for whom the darkness of sorrow enshrouds them. We ask your growth producing love for all those who celebrate and rejoice today. Be with each one of us and all of those whom we have named out loud or in our hearts to you. Help us to always to reach out to each other in compassion and support. In God's healing and mercy, we humbly ask to be with us as now we pray, as we've been taught. You can find that on page 270 in your red hymnal, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If today's usher could please come forward. Responding to God's invitation in joy, we offer our gifts. We offer our financial gifts collected in this plate, but figuratively we offer ourselves and our gifts and graces and give it into the Lord's care as well.
be in an attitude of prayer with me and hear the words from our prayer of dedication. Gardener God, thank you for all the blessings you've poured into our lives. Receive these gifts that they may become seeds of hope, love, and reconciliation with all of your beloved children. Amen. Our final hymn this morning will be number 600, Wonderful Words of Life. Before we go forward to live the church and ministry to all the world, before the final postlude is played, beloved, remember you are dirt. May you go forth and receive the gardener's tending so that we may all become good soil, ready to receive, nurture, and grow the seeds of the gospel wherever we go. The people say, Amen. Amen.